The autobiography I have chosen to study is called Sheila's Wogs and Pufters. It is written by Johnny Warren, Andy Harper and Josh Whittington and published in 2003. The reason I chose to study this autobiography is because Johnny Warren has been a great influence on Australia's soccer past, present and future. Without his influence, soccer wouldn't be where it is today. According to lecture notes, sport delivery systems are a combination of agencies that compete and contribute to the delivery of sport for all. They provide young athletes with clear pathways that will get them to the future success in their chosen sport. The analysis of Sheila's Wogs and Pufters will start off with a brief story of Johnny Warren's soccer career and how he had such a huge influence on development of soccer in Australia. The discussions of sports delivery systems used to assist Warren's career will then show how he got so far up in playing and coaching. Warren started off playing many different classic Australian sports when he was in school. Backyard cricket with his family, rugby union and rugby league for the school and tennis on weekends with his brothers. The one sport that caught his eye was soccer. He played it since he could kick a ball. Throughout school he played for clubs because schools did provide co-curricular soccer back then because it was seen as a sport that only migrants would play. At school, Warren's nickname was Wog Warren. This is where the title of the book came from. Back then, soccer was seen as a sport for the second class, so if you played soccer, you were considered either a Sheila, a Wog, or a Pufta. Growing up in a rugby territory, soccer wasn't prominent and it wasn't easily accessible. The only reason Warren had access to soccer was because his dad enjoyed watching it, so they went to games together. At the age of 16, Warren was chosen chosen to play third grade for Canterbury and eventually worked his way up to first grade. Warren stayed with Canterbury for four years until he was exchanged to St George. Warren's name was beginning to come well known in New South Wales and considered a young talent. Around 1955 soccer was considered minor and not worthy of much coverage but by the time Warren had made it to St George in 1960 he was able to get soccer on the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald. A crucial moment for Australian soccer was when FIFA lifted the international playing ban. It reopened the world of international football. Not long after this, Warren received a telegram confirming his selection into the Australian squad. Australia wanted to qualify for the World Cup in England. After playing some international matches, Warren stated that the Australian Soccer Federation has a total lack of experience dealing with soccer on an international level. On another trip, the ASF was again seen as poorly looking after them, bad travel arrangements, training camps, set too late and bad organisation of matches. Australia won their first international trophy in 1967. Warren believes that this was a very significant milestone for soccer in Australia. When the squad re returned home, they were great greeted by fans and media at the airport. This just shows what an influence Warren had on helping soccer become a recognised sport in Australia. His local news articles were helping so he thought he would reach out to the Sun newspaper in 1969 to write columns to reach the wider New South Wales community. This started his long involvement with the media in Australia. He started going on the Today Show, radio shows and, his, and sports programs on television. Every bit of work Warren did with the media was seen as a big breakthrough for soccer in Australia. A depressing moment for Warren was when he sustained a knee injury whilst playing a game. He went to hospital to have surgery, not knowing the extent of his injury. When he woke, his leg was in plaster. Warren had, the, had had the first knee reconstruction performed in Australia. Everyone thought his career was over, so everyone gave up on him. But Warren didn't give up on himself. After 15 months of extensive rehab, Warren returned and played with St George. Once he got his rhythm back, he was able to join the Australian team, finally known as the Socceroos in 1972. He was able to come back to soccer because of the sport delivery systems in place, such as the ASF and St George working together to assist Warren's career. The ASF hosted a round robin tournament in Sydney in 1973, part of the World Cup qualifying campaign. At the beginning of 1974, the Socceroos were officially qualified for the World Cup. The Socceroos were knocked out of the World Cup after a single elimination round. When they returned home, Warren was the offered a coaching job at St George. He played as a player coach for a little while, while then decided to end his career on a high. Warren scored the best goal he's ever scored at a state game and retired after that. 
Now he could fully commit to being St George club manager and controlling the entire coaching program. Warren introduced the National Soccer League to Australia. It was the first national sporting competition at club level. After this was up and running, he began running coaching clinics all over Australia. Because Warren's name was so well known all around Australia, two young Fijian boys were pointed in his direction to get some good coaching. They stayed with him for a couple of months before returning home. They spoke so well of Warren in Fiji that he was invited there to coach at all the schools in the entire country. Once he was done in Fiji, he was offered a senior level coaching job in Canberra. He helped re-establish the Canberra City team, so much so that the other cities wanted to recruit the players. During his stay in Canberra, Warren and his brother purchased a property in Gold Creek to hold coaching clinics. These were run for about 12 years. As a player, Warren was involved in many local competitions for the clubs he played for from a very young age to his late teens. From there, he competed in state competitions and quickly got recognised to play internationally. His soccer career led him to playing in international competitions such as the World Cup. When he retired, he was still heavily involved in many different levels of competition. He worked with school children to help them compete at local competitions. He coached a state team and, and also organised national and international events with his, within Australia, such as the New York Cosmos vs Socceroos in Sydney. He was also the sports ambassador for soccer in the, in the 2000 Olympics. Round robins were used for competitions such as World Cup qualifiers and local competitions. Knockout tournaments, or otherwise known as single elimination tournaments, were used for competitions such as the World Cup. At the club level of Warren's career, he was involved with many clubs who had managers and coaches to assist his participation and development in soccer. Once Warren was recruited to play for St George, it was up to the New South Wales Soccer Federation to organise competitions. When he was playing for Australia, it was mainly the ASF who assisted him in going to other countries and organising competitions and training sessions whilst overseas. If FIFA didn't lift the international playing ban, then the ASF wouldn't have as much experience dealing with international competition as they do today. When Warren retired, he eventually got employed by the ASF in 1988. Since then, the ASF has evolved and developed incredibly. They have come up with a 20-year plan it involves how to increase participation, new coaching standards, new facilities being built around Australia and the retention rate of referees has increased. The Australian Sports Commission has helped the ASF create a new, new national administration team to develop clubs around Australia. There is also now an opportunity for young soccer players to try out for a scholarship to be taken on at the Football Federation Australia Centre of Excellence excellence here in Canberra. This just shows how far soccer has come since Warren's time in, so in the sport. Without the assistance of the ASF and the New South Wales Soccer Federation, there would have been no way for Warren to have a soccer career unless he left Australia and played for a different country. If he was not able to be recognised by the ASF whilst playing club soccer, then he would have never furthered his career as a player. I believe that Johnny Warren knew a lot about the sports delivery systems because he showed an understanding of how the ASF should be doing their job better. He would always feel responsible when the ASF let the team down. At one point they only got paid $13 each for travelling overseas and competing in many competitions whilst missing out on one month's, one month's work, worth of work at home. He also showed an understanding of how the club system worked. Training hard and competing for your club will eventually get you noticed by a high level. In his case, it was the Australian squad noticing him, therefore taking his career to the next level. Warren's establishment of the NSL showed great understanding of development of soccer and why we need young athletes developing and competing in tough competitions as well as already recognised athletes. From this analysis of Sheila's, Wogs and Poofters, I have learnt that the sports delivery systems have a great impact on an individual's or team's sporting career. In the beginning, Warren stated that there was no senior pathway to have a career in soccer after high school, but luckily for him, he was already a part of the clubs that assisted his career. I didn't know much about the development and of soccer and its pathways before I had read this autobiography. I learnt that Warren has been a great influence on Australian soccer and the sports delivery systems that are around today. 
It surprised me how little the community cared about soccer in those days. The sports delivery systems can and have been improved over time due to the increase of popularity and higher inflow of money into the sport. Throughout the analysis of the older biography, Sheila's Wogs and Pufters, it is evident that Johnny Warren had a great impact on the development of soccer in Australia. Without Warren, soccer wouldn't be how it is today and the evolution of the Australian Soccer Federation wouldn't have happened. I believe that because of Warren, there wouldn't be as many pathways to a career in soccer as there are today.